Hello students, today we're going to be working on writing function rules in your algebra class. So to start, let's pause the screen for a second and see if we can figure out what the domain and range is for problems 1 and 2. Hopefully you've paused the screen and we're going to try and figure out what the domain and range is for each of these problems. So for starters, the domain, as we referred to earlier, is all the values that x can be. And because they gave us a predetermined table, our domain is all the values here x, for our x. For our range, it's all the values in our y's. So that's a little bit easier because they give it to us in a table. But in the graph that we see for problem number two, the, the domain is all the values in our x, or all the values that we can go to the left and to the right. So if we track this graph, keeping in mind we only want to know left and right, as we track this graph, this absolute value graph to the left, notice it has this arrow which means it continues infinitely long. So that's going to continue to go all the way to the left and all the way to the right. So we could say that our domain is all real numbers. Now our range is, now we're going to look at our range as our y, so how low does it go and how high does it go? So notice, if we were to drag our pen up and down, well the lowest that it could possibly go is 1, but if you look at our graphs, or if you look at these, the, the graph, it says that it's going to go upwards infinitely long. So we say that our range is all real numbers, that are greater than or equal to 1. So that's our domain and range for both of these problems. Now the purpose of this lesson is so that at the end you should be able to write a rule for the given relations. Now when we say we're writing a rule, we're actually just writing an equation to model what we're reading or what example that we have. Now if we look at example 1, we have our values for x and y. Now our first value for x is 1, and then we went to 5. 3 went to 7, 4 went to 8. Now what we're really trying to do there is we're trying to find out, given any value for x, how would we figure out what the y value is? So if we look at this particular problem, it mentions that we went from 1 to 5, which we actually just added 4. So, for that one, we just added 4. If we look at 3 to 7, we're also just adding 4. So hopefully, you should be able to sense a trend. So if we have a value for x that is actually just x, the way we'd figure out what that value is, is we would just do x plus 4. We take the original value for x, whatever that happens to be, and we're just going to add 4 to it. So our rule, or our equation for the second one, would be y equals, because that's what it would be equal to y, when we substitute for x, y equals x plus 4. Same rules apply for example 2. How did we get from 1 to 2? 2 to 4, 3 to 6, 4 to 8. Hopefully you've noticed that we're really just multiplying by 2 in all of these instances. Multiply by 2 the whole way throughout. So what we can say in this instance is that y equals 2x. Whatever our value is for x, we just multiply by 2. So we've just written some very basic function rules. So let's try example 3. It says, at a supermarket salad bar, the price of a salad depends on its weight. Salad costs 19 cents per ounce. Write a rule to describe the function. And part B says, how much would an 8-ounce salad cost? So first of all, we need to define a couple of things. First of all, we need to decide the cost of a salad is, or is equal to S. Second thing is how many ounces we got. So we're going to reverse this really quick and say S equals the cost of the salad 
and x is equal to the number of ounces. Now, we're going to try to solve example 3. It says s, the cost of the salad, is equal to 19 cents per ounce. And because we don't know how many ounces we have, we're just going to say x. So that is the answer to part 1. The next question, part B, says how much would it cost for an 8 ounce salad? So if we know, if our x is equal to 8 ounces, then all we simply need to do is take the equation that we wrote in part A and figure that out. So s equals 19 hundredths x and our x value just happens to be 8 ounces because that's what they wanted us to test and we're going to find that our salad equals one dollar and fifty two cents for eight ounces. So we've solved A and B. Question number two, or example four, says the price of mailing a letter was thirty nine cents for the first ounce or part of an ounce and twenty four cents for each ounce or part of an ounce after the first. So A says write a rule and then determine the cost of mailing a four ounce letter. So this one is a little bit trickier because they have two different prices per ounce in here. But what we need to consider is the cost, or C, is equal to the cost of mailing a letter. We also know that we have number of ounces. So we're going to say X equals number of ounces. Now the problem here is that it mentions that the first letter or the first ounce will cost 39 cents. So what we want to do is start with C equals, well the first ounce is going to cost 39 cents, but we also have to add on to that 24 cents for every ounce thereafter. Therefore, if the first ounce is 39 cents, then the second ounce wouldn't be 24 cents times x, it would be 24 cents times the quantity x minus 1, where x is equal to the number of ounces, and we're going to subtract 1 because the first ounce is 39 cents. So, when we do the calculation on this to figure out, to figure out how much the cost of the letter would be, we're going to find out that the cost equals one dollar and eleven cents. So now we have A and here's B. Now it's your turn. I want you to try problems one and two and post your answers to Edmodo. The first one you're going to write a function rule for each situation. Problem two is you're going to write and solve one for the second equation. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.